Today we're learning a new programming language. Uh, we're not going to be covering uh, the programming language in full detail, um, but is a funny little language, as you can see from this example, where the code, this is actually valid, a valid program that when you run it, uh, probably returns true. Um, this is not the, doesn't characterize the language, it's just a, a quirk of it. Uh, and maybe you could, uh, if you open the um, HTML slides, uh, press this link and uh, watch this video. Just to show a bit more um, of quirks of various programming languages with, with, a, with an emphasis in JavaScript, which is the programming language we're going to learn. Um, so today we're going to cover a few things. We're going to learn um, the basics of object-oriented programming. I'm going to introduce a paper called The Essence of JavaScript. Uh, and we're going to learn how to implement JavaScript using Racket. Uh, so first, let's cover a bit what is JavaScript. So as you know, JavaScript powers uh, every browser out there. Um, it is an object-oriented language. It has a very simple uh, object system, but it's actually very expressive. It's expressive enough to represent uh, you know, standard like Java's um, class hierarchy. Um, technically, JavaScript is known as ECMAScript, uh, although most people don't use that name, nomenclature, so in this course we're just going to use JavaScript. Um, so uh, JavaScript includes the web APIs and the DOM, and ECMAScript is just the core language itself, so the, the syntax and semantics, not the APIs that are accessible. So when you think about the, the language that runs in your browser, that's going to be JavaScript. Um, what are we learning? Well, we are learning um, what is an object, uh, and again, we're, we're still following the theme, we're going to focus on the semantics, which is another way to say how does it run, um, and how do you implement the, its execution. So we're going to focus around answering these five questions. So what is an object? How does variable binding work? How does inheritance work in this programming language? How does mutation work? And finally, how functions interact with objects? These are the main questions we're going to try to answer throughout uh, the le these last three lessons. Oh, also I wanted to welcome you to the last module of, of this course. Uh, this is module 8, where we're learning about object-oriented programming. So what are we not covering? We're not covering uh, JavaScript's, API, JavaScript's APIs, like standard library functions and all that. We're simply, we simply want to know how could we implement the core of JavaScript. So no promises, no asyncs, no awaits. Uh, we're not really even interested in control flow, like for and while and all that. Um, as you will see later, all of these can be represented in terms of, of the Lambda calculus. So we're not going to cover best practices or the differences between various versions of ECMAScript or even going through a very faithful implementation of, of ECMAScript. When we can, we will opt for simplicity uh, versus when, you know, rather than fidelity. So we're not really interested in having a 100% uh, ECMAScript, we really want something that is simple enough but still representative. That's what we're after. And how are we learning JavaScript? Well, we're going to learn JavaScript by this very nice paper, a paper I really like, called The Essence of JavaScript, where the authors are um, explaining how the core semantics of JavaScript, and then they, they define it formally, similarly to how you've learned in this course. And then they have uh, an accompanying implementation. And they even have a, a test suit that checks for bugs in existing implementations of browsers and all that. So they, will, they, will, they use the, their... Why would you want to have a paper about this? Well, that's one use, to debug uh, existing browsers and all that. Uh, this was published in a conference called eCoop, which is a really nice conference. Uh, that uh, actually e is for Europe, so it always happens in Europe. Um, so, how does this paper work? The main idea is that they define a lambda, an extension of, of lambda calculus, uh, 
called Lambda JS. So it's Lambda Calculus plus shared memory plus an object system. And we've learned uh, a similar thing, right? We've learned a shared memory, but used internally. Here, um, the language, as you know, JavaScript is a mutable language. So any, any code can write to a variable and update it. Uh, so we're going to have to implement that as well. We're also going to, the paper also describes a translation function that goes from JavaScript into JS. And this is basically your homework eight. Your homework eight is going to focus mainly on this task. So you're going to be implementing a part of this uh, paper. Um, so we're going to learn, essentially, we're going to learn this, this paper. Uh, what we'll be implementing is something a bit simpler, not directly JavaScript, but something which we'll call simple JS, which is JavaScript, but with an S expression uh, syntax. Okay, just to simplify the parsing procedure. The paper is accessible via this link, and feel free to click on it and peruse it if you want. Okay, so first, just some uh, before we even start in this call in this um, module. I want us to focus on a few definitions just to make sure everyone is on the same page. So you might, um, what we're going to learn, just to recap, we're going to learn this translation function, which is another fancy way of saying a, comp a compiler or a source to source compiler or source to source translator. And all of these things are more or less the same thing. So I just wanted to define all of them, make sure everyone has a very clear idea of what uh, each word means. So a translator or translation function is the process of converting terms from one language into another. Uh, it could be the same language. Uh, it could be trans trans transforming uh, terms of one language into the same language as well. Uh, so translator is just this, this function. It's a simple function described uh, abstractly. That is just saying, when you see an if, you should convert into this. When you see a while, you should convert into that. When you see a definition, you should do this. Generate this code, right? So as you can see, this is basically formally defining a compiler. Compiler is an implementation of a translation function. So a compiler translates a source language into a target language. Usually when we talk about compilers, we assume that the target language is a machine level, uh, so he's at the machine level, so the target language is either assembly or bytecode or some intermediate representation. Um, but it could just be a compiler could generate C code. Uh, that usually is known as a source-to-source -source translator when you take something that is uh, like Java and generate C, so two high-level languages. That is usually known as a source-to-source -source compiler or translator. So source-to-source -source translator is just saying that you have two higher level languages. Um, there's also this idea of syntactic desugaring, which is what we do in, in our parser. For instance, when you w look at a function definition or a basic definition, and we represent them internally in the same way. So you can think of a, a function definition as just a syntactic, syntactic abbreviation. Uh, so the process of syntactic desugaring is just taking something that is syntactic sugar and breaking it down into more uh, primitive terms. But again, all still in the same language. Then you might have also heard about transpiler. Uh, this is a term that is mostly used or popularized by the JavaScript community. It just means a source to source translator. Uh, you might also heard about polyfill if you're uh, versed in JavaScript. And polyfill is just a functionality of, it's just allowing, um, it's basically a transpiler uh, that makes available to older browsers newer fi modern functionalities of the programming language. And the way they do this is by generating code. So basically a translator, right? right? A source to source translator from the same language to the same language. So Next, what am I going to do? I'm going to introduce Java basics of JavaScript, and then I'm going to introduce Lambda JS, and then I'm going to relate um, functionalities found in JavaScript to those in Lab Lambda JS, and finally, I'm going to list the Lambda JS AST written in in Racket, as I usually do when I introduce a language in this course. 